What is going on guys, it's Triple G here, back with another Borderlands 3 video, and today we're going to be going through part 1 of our beginner's guide. This guide is going to be about character selection, what are the strengths and weaknesses of each character, and why their playstyles could define what character you select, both at the beginning of the game and actual end game. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, or join us over on Twitch, we stream 5 times a week. And otherwise, let's get straight into that video. So first up, let's start with our boyo. It is Zane. Zane is the gadget man or the operative as many of them known. He has access to a barrier, has access to a drone and has access to a clone which can digiswap between himself. In terms of the playstyle, Zane is all about speed, he's all about damage and he has a ton of survivability when using his barrier. Now if you're going to select Zane through the actual story, you're going to be having a ton of fun. You're going to be able to use the gadgets that he has available to absolutely wreck face. In terms of endgame, Zane is one of the strongest characters at endgame due to his tremendous survivability when using the barrier. Now the barrier can be deployed in front of Zane for added protection. Both him and his allies can shoot through it, amplifying the damage and the, amp sh the shots that go through it. And in addition to this, Zane can pick up skills like All-Rounder, meaning that he can basically pick up his barrier and become a bubble around him. Make it makes him look like a hamster ball running around the around the map, which is which is pretty damn cool. In terms of the Sentinel drone, the blue tree is where Zane's damage kind of lives. Lots and lots and lots of these skills are on kill, so you can see here when we kill an enemy, we get mo movement speed. The faster we move with that movement speed, the more gun damage we do. So you are going to be zooming around with Zane and having a ton of fun. His capstone includes C in red, which gives you instantaneous kill skills and instantaneous damages. So all that damage buff, all that extra shots, all that health healing, everything all at once. And his drone can also deliver grenades, which is a pretty cool skill. Recently, the clone was buffed. So now the clone can do a tremendous amount of damage. I think it's like 30 times damage when you actually take double barrel. And as well as that, the drone, uh, sorry, the clone can be a distraction, which is really, really good for just kind of getting out of tricky situations. So next up we have Flak. Now Flak is incredibly cool. He is known as the damage boy. He can do a ton of damage in terms of boss killing like no other character in the game he is a beast master so he has access to pets as you can see on the left hand side of my character here he has access to three different pets his action skills include a gamma burst which puts a gamma radiation bubble essentially somewhere on the map that you can either stun into heal or damage enemies with he has rack attack which basically releases rack from his hands which is extremely powerful and then he has fade away which basically essentially makes him kind of a lethal or invisible. And while he is in fade away, he can do a ton of damage. So as I said before, Flak is a boss killer. If you're going through the story, you are going to need to pick up some health along the way because he is a glass cannon and he does struggle with survivability at times, particularly through the story. However, his orange tree here is where all the damage he's made. Flak excels with snipers and rocket launchers because we have... Um, skills like leave no trace as well as hand count and Fang. so you get that ability to not only get your ammunition back but also fire extra projectiles which comes in really really well he also has skills that once you've killed like a badass for example you can then carry that damage for a significant amount of time for the next two or three minutes so flak has a ton of damage output but just bear in mind, he can be a bit of a glass cannon. In terms of boss killing, though, there is nobody at killing bosses better than Flak. Next up, we have Mose. Now, Mose has access to an Iron Bear or tank, for what it will, that she can jump into on action skill. It has a ton of armor, so it gives you a ton of protection. So when you're in trouble, you can dip into that. And in addition to that, it now absolutely packs a punch thanks to the latest updates into the game. In terms of when you're playing the, through the story early game, pretty much stand in front of any boss in the game and Iron Bear will absolutely rip it to shreds. The Iron Bear can come with, as you can see here, either a grenade launcher, a rail gun, or a minigun. My personal favorite is the Vangusha rocket pods. They are very, 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 very good at killing bosses and enemies. In terms of that as well, 
Mose is exceptionally good with splash damage, rocket launchers, grenades. She has skills here that can make her grenades not only crit, but then you can heal from that critical hit damage. She you can use Russian offensive here so she can run and good at the same time. She has a ton of ammo regeneration, both in redistribution and in forge as well. So if you like if you're the kind of person that likes never running out of ammunition, either through the play, the story playthrough or at end game, Mose is your person to go with she is super super fun her iron bear can be changed as well to have multiple different abilities uh, in terms of end game as well um she's probably one of the strongest right now she's definitely my second favorite and definitely worth the time investment finally we have amara the siren of borderlands 3 now amara is incredibly strong she is both strong in terms of survivability as well as damage. Amara can do really, really unique things and she has a ton of different abilities which synergize with everything that she does. One of the unique things about Amara is she has skills that boost her elemental damage depending on what she skills. She can boost both incendiary, shock and corrosive by just using her skill tree. In addition to that, she has a face cast, which is kind of a projectile that goes out. She can uh, actually grasp, pick up enemies and immobilize them, very similar to Maya in that sense. And then finally, she can face slam the ground, which is like kind of like a Titan slam that you might have seen in Destiny in previous. One of the unique things about Amara is that she can boost her melee damage through her skill tree. Melee damage is scaled very, very well at the moment in the game. So if you can, uh, punch enemies and scale into melee you will do a ton of damage and it is exceptional at end game in mayhem 10 as i said before amara is adept at survivability so expect to see a ton of survivability uh, skills including guardian angel which will allow you to get yourself up automatically and only has a short two minute cooldown in addition to that as well she can boost both all of her elemental effects and she can boost her splash damage. Amara is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to endgame and one of the strongest characters in the game. So guys, that's it for today's video. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week. And otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip.